In this tutorial we're going to be setting up our heal dependency injection and because we already have our Gradle setup and we imported the libraries and everything like that, it will be way easier. The only thing we have to do first is open our main activity and inside of it we have to set it up as our entry point for the heal. We can do that by adding a notation above it with Android entry point. And next is we have to create a custom application class. So let's do that. Let's just call it base application. The only thing in our case that we have to do here is first we have to extend the application. And next we just add another annotation over here, Hilt Android application. Of course, now if you want to use this application, we have to go to the Android manifest and add it as our current application. Next, what we have to do is create our Hilt modules. In Hilt, the modules represent everything that we want to share between our project and, for example, we would like to do that with our REST API. Maybe if you have GraphQL or whatever it is that you just want to access more easily. So let's do that. In our top albums, in the application module, let's create a new package and call it DY just for dependency injection. In our case, we will have a couple of modules and the first one will be network module. So let's create it. Let's set up our network module as open class. And what else we have to do is add a couple of annotations. The first one will be to set it as module, of course. And the second one will be to add a component to it. Now the component just means that depending on what component we choose, this module will live certain amount of time. For example, if we set it as activity mod component, then it will, if the activity crashes, this component will be no longer available. But in our case, we set it up a singleton component, which is a bit more global than activity. And you can check all the types of components in the description below. I will link to the Hilt documentation and depending on what you need, you're going to be using a specific component for it. But in this tutorial, we're going to be using our singleton component. What we want to do next is actually initialize our libraries and let's see how we do that. The first thing will be, of course, we would like to have our REST API, like we said, and we're using retrofit. So to do that, let's just create a new function, which will be next. Let's initialize retrofit because this is the library we're using. So we would like to have access to it globally because we will use almost everywhere the REST API. We do that by creating a function and let's call it provide retrofit. Every function should contain a type which will be singleton and provides. The most easy way we initialize it is just by saying retrofit.builder.build. Of course, we would like to add a couple of more things to it. For example, base URL. So let's create one. On top, let's create a new function, which will be base URL and just pass it to it. We're going to be using the Apple Marketing Tools API for our application. So that's why we have this link over here. Also, when we are serializing and deserializing API requests, we are going to be using Moshi as library. We can add it by adding a converter factory and inside of it, we need to pass our Moshi factory. So in order to do that, we need to initialize our Moshi library as well. And let's do it on top. And now we can add it inside the converter factory. Every request we make now will be using this converter factory. There will be one more thing that we have to do to our retrofit builder. And this will be, we would like to add a OKHTTP OK client to it. Working with OKHTTP OK is very nice because we can have different interactors, which means, for example, in our case, we would like every request that we're having, be it sending the request or receiving the request, we would like to see the information being displayed in our console. The way we do that is create another function, same as our retrofit singleton, but we make it for OKHTTP. OK Again, this will be enough to just have an OKHTTP OK client, but as we said, we would like to have our login detected and that's why we're going to be using HTTP login interactor. So to add a new interactor, we just say add interactor and inside of it, we point to what we want to use. And we're going to be using HTTP login interactor. 
we can also add settings to the HTTP login interactor and we're going to be doing exactly that. For example, we would like to set the level of what we are reporting and this will be in our case HTTP login interactor level body. Now we would like to add it to our retrofit and the way we do that is very simple because we just added it as a singleton every time we use OK HTTP client it will be using this initialization over here. So just by adding it as our parameter here and then when we call dot client and we pass the OK HTTP client everything will be working fine. If you're not familiar with call, it's a library that we're going to be using to load our images and cache them. Again, the way we create our module is the same as last one. Inside of it, let's create a new provides image loader, which will have application and say parameter, and we just return our image loader builder and build. This will be enough for our initialization, but we would like to add a bit more things because we would like to cache our images and we're going to be seeing that in the future why we're doing that. The way we do that is use this cache functionality that, that the coil library provides and we set the directory and the name of the cache. Let's also set crossfade animation for our images. This will be for this tutorial and in the future ones you'll see how we are actually using those libraries we just integrated and we might add a couple of more modules as well. So thank you for watching and if you like the tutorial please leave a like and subscribe for more.